Audio Jungle. Hey guys, uh, Marco here from Aviero Live CS. Welcome back to my channel. First of all, I want to apologize for not being able to upload any videos in the last weeks. But now I'm back and uh, we will continue with our Boeing 737-800NG systems presentation. And today we will start a series of videos about the hydraulic system. And let's start talking about uh, the hydraulic system overview. The 737 has three hydraulic systems. They are system A, system B, and the standby system. The hydraulic systems have a reservoir in the main wheel well. System A and system B operate independently. A hydraulic servicing line connects system B and the standby system. The bleeder system supplies air pressure to systems A and B reservoir to make sure there is a positive flow of fluid. System B supplies pressure for the standby system. The number one engine driven hydraulic pump and AC electric motor driven pump supply the pressure for system A. And here in this circle you can see this is the electric motor driven pump and this is the engine driven pump for system A. Under normal conditions, the number two generator powers the electric motor driven pump for system A. The number two engine driven hydraulic pump and AC electric motor driven pump supply the pressure for system B. And you can see the pumps here as well. Under normal conditions, the number one generator powers the electric motor driven pump for system B. There is one AC electric motor driven pump that supplies pressure for the standby system. And that one is here. Either hydraulic A or B system can power all flight controls with no decrease in airplane controllability. Here you can see a list of the components powered by hydraulic systems A and B. System A, we can see aerons, rotor, elevator and elevator fill flight spoilers, two on each wind, ground spoilers, alternate brakes, number one thrust reverser, autopilot A, normal nose wheel steering, landing gear, and the power transfer unit PTU, which we'll, we will be talking about it later. System B, it powers uh, aerons as well, rudder, elevator and elevator fill, flight spoilers, two on each wind, Leading edge flaps and slats, trailing edge flaps, normal brakes, number two thrust reverser, autopilot B, alternate nose wheel steering, landing gear transfer unit, auto slats, yield damper. And now let's talk about controls and indicators. Okay, here you can see we have the forward overhead panel. Here uh, we have the lower DU. In order to see the hydraulic uh, quantity and pressure indications, in order to see the hydraulic uh, quantity and pressure, uh, we have to use the MFD system switch here. Let's talk about the flight control switch A. We see three positions for both of them. For A and B, it's exactly the same. We have a standby rotor, off, A on, and in this case, B on. So if we select the standby rotor, it activates a standby hydraulic system pump and opens a standby rotor shutoff valve to pressurize standby rotor power control unit. Off, closes the flight control shutoff valve, isolating ailerons, elevators, and rotor from hydraulic system A pressure. On is the normal operating position and this is a, remember, it's a guarded position. And for the flight control switch B, it's exactly the same. Now, if we talk about this uh, standby hydraulic lights, we have three lights. We can see low quantity, low pressure, and standby rotor on. Low quantity light, the first one, 
it's uh, amber as you can see and indicates low quantity just less than 50% in the standby hydraulic reservoir. The light is always armed. Now, if we continue with the next one, which is low pressure light, this one here, it indicates output pressure of standby pump is low. This light is armed only when standby pump operation has been selected or automatic standby function is activated. Now, if we talk about the standby rotor on light here, it indicates the standby rotor system is pressurizing the standby rotor power control unit, or PCU. If we continue down, we can see the low pressure lights for the flight controls and that they illuminate amber, indicating that low hydraulic system A pressure to ailerons, elevator, and rotor. This, uh, this light is deactivated when uh, flight control switch A is positioned to standby rotor and the standby rotor shutoff valve opens. Now if we talk about the flight spoilers for A and B systems, two positions on and off. In on is a guarded position and this is the normal operating position. It's off closes the respective flight spoiler shutoff valve. And this switch is normally used for maintenance purposes only. Now, if we talk about the yaw damper light, amber light, and it indicates that the yaw damper system is not engaged. The switch has two positions for the yaw damper, off and on. In off, it disengages the yaw damper. On, engages main yaw damper to main rotor power control unit if the B flight control switch is in the on position. Engages a standby Yaw damper to standby rotor power control unit if both the A and B flight control switches are in the standby position. The yaw damper system consists of a main and a standby yaw damper. Yaw damper operation does not result in rotor pedal movement. Okay, now let's talk about the alternate flaps. This switch it has two positions off here and armed. Off is the guarded position and that's a normal operating position. In arm, it closes the trailing edge flap bypass valve, activates the standby pump, and arms the alternate flaps position switch. And the switch has three different positions, up, off, and down. In the up position, electrically retracts the trailing edge flaps. Leading edge devices remain extended and cannot be retracted by the alternate flap system. In off position, here, normal operating position, down, which is spring loaded to off, when selected momentarily, fully extends the leading edge devices using a standby hydraulic pressure. When held, extends trailing edge flaps until switch release. In the off position, it's not spring-loaded to off. Now let's uh, quickly review the next slides here. We have for field differential pressure. It is armed when the trailing edge flaps are up or down. It's illuminated amber. It means excessive differential pressure in the elevator field computer. Excessive differential pressure can be caused by erroneous activation of the elevator field shift module. Next slide we're going to talk about is the speed trim fail, which is the second one here. This slide means that the speed trim system has failed, indicates failure of a single FCC channel when master caution light recall is activated and light extinguishes when master caution system is reset. Let's talk about the next one, which is the MAC trim fail. It means that the MAC trim system has failed and exactly the same than the previous one indicates failure of a single FCC channel when master caution light recall is activated and light extinguishes when master caution system is reset. Now, the last one is auto slat fail and this light is telling us that the auto slat system has failed. Indicates failure of a single stall management yield ampere computer when illuminated during master caution recall and extinguishes when master caution system is reset.
Let's talk about the hydraulic uh, panel now. Just remember, the hydraulic panel has a different color because it's one of the major systems on the airplane. And we're going to talk about each switch and light we have in this panel. And let's start with the overheat light. The overheat light, hydraulic fluid used to cool and lubricate the electric motor driven pump has overheated or the pump itself has overheated. That's what that light means. Now, if we talk about the low pressure light, it means that the output pressure of associated electric driven hydraulic pump is low. Now we have a low pressure light for the engine driven pump, and it means the output pressure of the associated engine driven hydraulic pump is low. When related engine fire warning switch is pulled, the low pressure light is deactivated. Now, if we talk about the switches, if we talk about the engine hydraulic pump switch here for system A, here for system B, in the on position, it de-energizes blocking valve in pump to allow pump hydraulic pressure to enter the system. In off, energizes blocking valve to block pump output. The switch should remain on at shutdown to prolong solenoid life. Now let's talk about the hydraulic indications here. So you can see in the center forward panel, we have the MFD system uh, switch. It's right here. If we press system, it will display the hydraulic indications on lower DU or the inboard DU if the main panel DU switch is placed to the inboard MFD position. So it all depends. Second push removes indications from the respective DU. Now, if we come to the lower DU, we can see here the hydraulic system quality indications right here. And this is in a percentage, okay? It indicates digital percentage 0% to 106% of hydraulic quantity. The hydraulic system pressure indication, as you can see here, indicate system pressure. The normal pressure is 3,000 PSI. The maximum pressure is 3,500 PSI. When both pumps for a system are off, the indication may read hydraulic system reservoir pressure, normally less than 100 PSI. If we see this RF indication, it means that the hydraulic quantity is below 76%. You can see it here. Is valid only when the airplane is on ground with both engines shut down or after landing with flaps up during taxi in. Now let's talk about A and B hydraulic system pumps. Both A and B hydraulic systems have an engine driven pump and AC electric motor driven pump. The system A engine driven pump is powered by the number one engine and system B engine driven pump is powered by the number two engine. An engine-driven hydraulic pump supplies approximately six times the fluid volume of the related electric motor-driven hydraulic pump. Hydraulic fluid used for cooling and lubrication of the pumps passes through a heat exchanger, which you can see here for system A, here for system B, before returning to the reservoir. The heat exchanger for system A is located in main fuel tank number one, and for system B is in main fuel tank number two. There is a caution, which is important to know. Minimum fuel for ground operation for electric motor driven pumps is 760 kilograms in their related main tank. Now, if we talk about hydraulic A and B reservoir, hydraulic A reservoir, engine driven pump has a standpipe reaching up to first 20% of the reservoir. The reason behind this is because the engine driven pump is more susceptible to leak since it is a heavy duty pump. In case of an engine driven pump leak, there will be 20% of hydraulic fluid available in reservoir A for the electric motor driven pump A to work with. Hydraulic B reservoir engine driven pump and electric motor driven pump have common standpipe 
When leak occurs, around 5 liters remain in the reservoir and can be used for operation of PTU on auto slats. When there is a leak in a standby system, hydraulic B quantity will drop to 72%, which is a good number to remember in case we have a leak on the standby system. Now, if we talk a little bit more about the hydraulic A and B reservoir quantity, uh, a couple of things I just want to mention here. There is no pressure indication for the standby system and the hydraulic brake pressure indicator, which is located in the right forward panel, shows the hydraulic brake pressure. The normal brake pressure is 3000 PSI. So we usually, when pressurize the systems, we always check the pressure here and we check the hydraulic brake pressure indicator as well.